if you look at my title, if you need one, is Jesus has set me free. Yes. Now, can you stay free? You can touch yourself. Say, Jesus, Jesus. has set me free. Yes. And the question is now, can I stay free? Yes. Mm. Paul speaking in Galatians when he wrote this, stand firm. In other words, is what he is doing is giving us a command. A command is to do something in the future and involves continuous and repeated action. Amen. So he is telling us again, and every time we read the word of God, he is telling us to stand fast, therefore in the liberty, the freedom that Christ has given us. How I many you know that in, in, in God's kingdom, there is nothing but liberty and freedom in his kingdom. Man. In everyone in God's kingdom, there is no one that will, let me repeat, there should be no one that should be in bondage in God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that Christ Jesus came to set us free. The blood that he shed for us paid the price. Amen. We was under ransom. The Bible says <coughs> that the whole world is captive under sin. So in other words, when we are born into this world, Everyone is born into captivity unto the uh, our sinful mindset. We're born into captivity under Satan's kingdom. Christ Jesus came to set us free so that we can be free to live the way the Lord would have us to live in freedom. Amen. Amen. God desires for none of his children that are in the body of Christ, those that the Lord has called to live in bondage. The Bible says in Galatians 3.13 that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of love. Therefore, the word of God tells us, tells you, and it should tell me. Also that we have been free from poverty. There is no poverty in God's kingdom. Man. Therefore, since there is no poverty in God's kingdom, poverty, poverty should not rest upon us. You know, in other words, in God's kingdom, and there is two parts to this, and this first part I want to share with, with you when we're talking about God's kingdom. God's kingdom is a governmental, a, a governmental jurisdiction, amen, where the kingdom of God, where the kingdom of God reigns. Physically, it has not manifested yet as it will manifest, but until it manifests on the spiritual side of it, Christ Jesus wants us to walk in it and now within the spirit and within our mindset. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus said, the kingdom of God does not come with careful observation, but in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, it resides on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we walk not by what we see, but we walk by faith. So in other words, just like just like when Jesus walked this natural earth, everyone was expecting a, a, a conquering king to come, but Jesus came to set in order at this time, and this is where we are right now, he come to set up a spiritual kingdom in yes. within inside every believer. That's uh -huh. why he said that the kingdom of God does not come with careful observation. We're not made to see this thing right there. Amen. Amen. But in the spirit, we have to see ourselves as royalty. Let me see. Let me ask you. How many of y'all see yourself free in Christ? Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, when you see yourself in free in Christ Jesus, that means uh, bondage will try to come your way once again. But, uh. but when bondage try to come, that's where temptation. Temptation will come your way. Mm -hmm. okay? But when temptation comes your way, because the enemy, the evil one, knows your makeup. He you knows everybody's makeup because he is sure that he has an identity with our old nature. So he deals with our old nature. So in other words, he throws a temptation at your way. It is a temptation that's already made up to your old makeup. Amen. It's made up to your old DNA. Mm -hmm. Okay? So whatever your temptation is may not be my temptation. And whatever my temptation may be, it may not be your temptation. Mm -hmm. Whatever the temptation may be, temptation does not have to be lust. Every time when you think of temptation, first thing that pops in the natural mind is lust sexual. Amen. It don't have to be like that. It could be lust of food, lust of power, lust Come of prestige, on. lust of whatever. Mm -hmm. But see, when temptation comes your way, that is when the enemy wants to pull you back into bondage. Amen. And you captive in your mindset. Okay, so that you cannot be free to do what God has called you to do and to be. Amen? Amen. Now, since I said that, everyone pretty much raised their hand that they are, are free in God, but you may be physically free, yeah, but spiritually, free are you free? Come on, Pastor. Are you free when you go look at yourself in the mirror? Do, do, do you see royalty? Do you see success? Do you, mm -hmm. Or do you see poverty? Do you see lack? Do mm -hmm. you see defeat? Come on. Do you see yourself going nowhere? Because if you have been set free 
If the Lord wants you to be free, you'll be free in your mindset. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The enemy come and throw a stronghold upon us. And a stronghold can be something that you, that you have been told ever since you was a child. Mm -hmm. Ever since you was a child. Uh, your parents or somebody might tell you, you said, boy, girl, you'll never amount to anything. You'll never be able to do anything in life. Your teacher may have scorned you some kind of way and said, you know, you're the dumbest student I've ever had. And that can sustain a child. And it can stay with the child. That was a seed of rejection that's been deposited within you. And then you begin to let it sprout and grow. Mm. Now that we in the body of Christ because, because you did not let that thing go. Even though now the Bible said that we are free in him. But truly, I'm not really free the way God wants us to be free. Mm -hmm. Now, can we look at the things of the world that we may not gamble, I may not play bingo no more, I may not even smoke, I may not even drink, I may not even let foul language come out of our mouth, but it goes way beyond that. That is just a makeup of the outer prison, but on the inside, on the inside, are you really free? Come on, are Pastor. You all bound up and tied up, and you come to church, and, and you come to Jesus. the house, and, and you put on this facade, I can put this robe, I can put my robe on it, and sing a song, I can come to the house of God and, and usher, but when I come and sit down in my seat, I am so bound up. I am so Jesus. on the inside. I do not know how to get free, but the Bible free, tells Pastor. me that I should be free. But yet, still, in spite of that, I still don't know My how God. to be free. Woo. Do I go to the front of the altar and ask God to heal me in front of everybody? But yet, if I go, then everybody will see that I have trouble. Mm. Wow. So instead of everybody seeing me, I just sit back in my seat. And kick this bondage and then get up like everybody else gets up, raise my hand like I'm in victory, but yet I still leave the seat. My God. How does it make God feel? Mm. How does it make God feel when, when everything in his kingdom is at your disposal, but yet we are too afraid to apply it to a life to get ourselves free? Mm-hmm. It's just like naturally, that's just like a kid who comes home every day, and every day this child comes home. This child comes home, to, uh, clothes all torn up and, and bloody nose, and we go and say, "Look, Johnny, what happened to you, son?" And he said, "Daddy, I, I just got beat up." And he said, "What happened?" This kid, he always picked with me every day, and, I, and he's too strong. I 